So the BRU that I've been directing sort of over these last two cycles, because directly because of the merger of the Nuffield Orthopaedic Centre with the, the Churchill and the John Ratcliffe to form Oxford University Hospitals Trust, we now become a, a theme within the, within the BRC. So what I thought I'd do is reflect a little in this talk on what's happened in the BRU and then tell you about what we're planning to do as, as part of the, of the BRC. And the disease area that I um, focus on and my colleagues, um, some of them in the audience, which is great to see, is musculoskeletal disease. And um, it's a hugely common problem. And as we get older, it becomes more common. It dominates. This slide here and the, the blue bars show you that from the age of 40 onwards, musculoskeletal disease is the commonest reason that you will suffer, that you will have disability. And as we get older, that suffering, that disability from your frame is very often accompanied with disease from other areas. So I think what we suffer from and the multitude of diseases that we have, the comorbidities that we have, are a real priority uh, for health services, particularly in the developed world, but also increasingly in the developing world. So back pain and neck pain are the commonest reason for suffering in all countries in the world. And that's the reason we have a theme on this in, in the BRC. We, over the last 20 years, uh, have been able to leverage over 100 million pounds of funding from philanthropy um, to fund three centers. One, the Kuduri, supported by Michael Kuduri. One, the Botner Research Center, supported by the Botner Foundation. And thirdly, the Kennedy Institute, which moved from London in 2011. And those three institutes that focus on musculoskeletal disease are distributed between the John Ratcliffe site, the Nuffield Orthopaedic Center site, and the Old Road Campus. And they form the foundation of our, of our sort of research activity co-located with the hospitals. The Botner, uh, which I direct, uh, has a strong element in orthopedics and rheumatology and a, a, a registered trial unit, the Oxford Clinical Trials Research Unit, directed by Doug Altman and Sally Lamb. And we focus particularly on surgical technology and regenerating damaged tissue. We're just about to build a new building. We're also funded by philanthropy, which we will be running in conjunction with engineering science. It's good to see Lionel here. We're going to appoint the first joint chair between medicine and engineering, hopefully in the next few months. And that building will house within it the only GMP manufacturing facility for implants and devices. And that will allow us to take new inventions in Oxford directly into humans with our own production facility. So very much along the lines that Adrian was describing with vaccines. And that, there's nothing like that in the world. And that will be, to my mind, a very exciting development. The Kennedy, which moved from Oxford in 2011, 2011 uh, will, focuses on immunity and the microbiome. We have a very exciting new director in Fiona Powery. They also have uh, components of uh, uh, remodeling and tissue regeneration in that building. I just thought it would be interesting to show you what's happened in musculoskeletal diseases alongside, and then, in my opinion, very much as a consequence of this partnership between the university and the hospitals and because of NIHR funding. So if you look at the number of principal investigators, that's both total PIs and full professors, from 2008 onwards, there's been a huge leap in PIs and in our overall staff and student complement. And that's been matched by an increase in externally leveraged grant funding, which I, the catalyst very much has been this partnership. And the NIHR, I think, has been very important in that. And we, we have a wide distribution of funding and an increasing amount of funding from industry who want to come and test and trial and work with us to develop new products which they want us to help translate into humans. That's made a difference to the quality and number of our publications and the number of students. We now have students from over 25 nationalities. Half of our 100 PhD students in, in musculoskeletal disease are supported in some way by the BRC, by NIHR funding. Dame Fiona mentioned the equality and diversity issue. And for any of my friends and colleagues here who've had to chair the Athena Swan committees. This is, it's been a very, it was a very interesting and challenging <laughs> letter that we received. Uh, thankfully, we, everybody's responded incredibly well. My 
honest opinion, having chaired this committee now since that letter arrived, is that this has been just as good for men as it has been for women. And actually what we've been able to do is change the working environment that we work in. And I think it's been beneficial. So although it was pretty stark, I think it's actually been a, been a good thing. And we now produce family fact sheets. We do all sorts of things that support uh, women and men in the working environment. The other thing that NIHR have done is has driven us to be more serious about the engagement and involvement of patients and public in what we do. So go out and tell people what we're doing, go to science festivals, run open days, go to the Ashmolean, but also when we're setting up and designing trials, make sure that we have patients involved from the very start. And I, I think this has been a positive component to what the NHR structure has driven us to do. And that's resulted in impacts, impacts such as the invention of the Oxford knee, now used in millions of patients around the world. It's a Partial knee replacement allows people to get back to very early activity, skiing, running, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, the development of patient-reported outcome scores. No longer is the surgeon's view of whether or not your operation worked the right thing. We want to hear from the patient. And these are now translated into 25 different languages used all around the world to assess outcomes of surgical procedures. The invention of the anti-TNF therapies that has made the Kennedy so famous. When I started operating in orthopedics 30 years ago, 50% of the joint replacements I did were for rheumatoid. Last year, it was less than 1%. So these drugs have truly transformed a disease. It's an absolute miracle. And, uh, and we're seeing further work in this area. It's great to see Peter Taylor here in, in the audience who's uh, pursuing that. So looking forward... What are the research areas of the musculoskeletal theme? Linking with engineering, better use of biomaterials, developing surgical skills and technology, better in management of trauma. Trauma remains one of the biggest killers of young people, and it's a huge problem in the developing world. Bone cancer and sarcoma, rare bone diseases, preventing disease, making us mobile for longer with better rehabilitation and physiotherapy, further improvement on the management of inflammatory joint diseases, and then working with other parts of the BRC to look at how we can use big data, how can we uh, involve programs such as pharmacosurveillance. And I'll just touch on a few examples of those um, before I finish. So the BRU resulted in the invention of novel implants made of nanofibers, made by a process called electrospinning. These new implants directly influence local cells and produce a dramatically improved endogenous healing response when we operate on tissues that need to, need to be mended. These are now moving, funded by the Wellcome Trust and by NHR, into first-in-man trials with our own production facility. We plan to further enhance these developments by the use of robots. So we believe we can precondition these scaffolds with cells mimicking normal physiological movements, movements with a humanoid bioreactor. And we believe we're going to gen generate a new form of implant that will be used, for example, for replacing ligaments, tendons, or pieces of um, joint or bone. We're working with McLaren Technologies, who have developed movement sensors for their Formula One drivers to track their movements around the track. We're now strapping these to surgeons, not monitoring how fast they move, but how well they move. Seeing if we can improve the surgical performance by use of new technology. And these are now being distributed among operating theatres around, around the country. We have a very strong programme in physiotherapy. As I mentioned before, back pain is a huge issue. I, if I ask people in the audience to put their hand up, who's had back pain at some stage? Right. Those of you that haven't put your hand up, you're probably <laughs> going to get it at some stage. It's a really big problem. We believe we can prevent it by programs that we teach people and show people, and Sally Lamb is leading on this. We're also trying to extend out from Oxford, and this um, is a program that we want to run alongside the translational research collaborations within NIHR. This is the M40 Alliance, £7 million of funding from the Kennedy Trust to allow Oxford scientists to work better with Birmingham scientists, to allow our invention and um, programs to work with the population of Birmingham to produce what's a, a better translation, a faster translation, because we're working together rather than against each other. 
um, big data, working with other researchers within Oxford to maximize the use of large data sets to monitor diseases in this area. And I'd just finish by just emphasizing or re-emphasizing what, what Keith said, is that we are not working in isolation. I estimate that at least 80% of the other themes within the BRC we are working directly with. So although the clusters, are, I think, are a great idea, it's not just about the clusters, it's not just about the themes, it's about the opportunity to work uh, with other scientists throughout the Biomedical Research Centre. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you.